Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to derive differential form of mass continuity equation. This form is commonly used in atmospheric sciences and oceanography, wind engineering, and uh, in some other fields of engineering as well. However, I highly, highly encourage you to check my video on uh, Reynolds transport theorem and how we derive continuity equation from Reynolds transport theorem because that is the most natural way to develop, to derive this equation. If you want just differential form and kind of short version of that whole story, then today's video is good for you. We will also reintroduce the concept of mass flow rate because that is the crucial concept in the story of mass continuity equation. Let's get started. We will start this derivation by first defining mass flow rate. Let's say I have an area A and uh, there is a flow coming from left to right, velocity of this flow is u. Because everything will be in one dimension, in this case I don't have to use vector hereafter. Now what is the element of mass that passes this surface that has area A, well that would be density times volume, dV. But what is volume, dV? That will be area A, which is not changing, times some distance that fluid particles pass in time dT having this velocity u. So it will be rho times A, times some distance, let's call it dh, where that distance is something like this. So this distance is dh. And that is distance that fluid pa elements pass in time dt having this velocity u. So that is rho a u dt. Dividing this equation with dt, I get that dm dt is equal rho au and this is called mass flow rate. Now to get mass continuity equation in differential form we will use this reasoning but instead of one surface we will apply it to a volume which we call control volume. So Let's say I have uh, this cube. Cube has sides dx, dy, dz, and I will consider one dimensional flow along the x axis. So there is a flow coming in and the uh, mass flow rate is rho a u through this surface. We just derived it here. Now there is also some flow leaving this control volume because dx, dy and dz are infinitesimally small distances I can express mass flow rate on this side by using Taylor's expansion of the, the same quantity on this side. In other words, mass flow rate here is equal mass flow rate here, which is rho a u plus rate of change of rho a u along dx times dx. So rate of change along dx direction of this quantity rho a u But I write it like this because A is constant, namely surface area of this side is equal to surface area of this side, so it can go in front of differentiation times dx. Here, as you see, I try to explain the physical meaning of Taylor series expansion as I was writing it. At the same time, mass of fluid in this control volume is dm. 
and that is density of this fluid times volume, and volume is dx, dy, dz. Now, we want to find how mass inside control volume changes. So, delta m over delta t is equal, if I differentiate this with respect to time, I will only have differentiation of density because dx, dy, and dz are constant. Control volume is fixed. So, delta rho, delta t, dx, dy, dz. The mass inside control volume can also change if there is a difference between mass flow rate into control volume compared to mass flow rate out of the control volume. Therefore, we can write that this delta rho delta t dx dy dz is equal mass flow rate in rho a u minus mass flow rate out. I hope you can recognize that a area is dy dz. That's simple. Which means that this right hand side becomes rho u a is dy dz minus rho u dy dz minus delta rho u delta x dx dy dz. Now look, these two cancel each other and this cancels with this. So we arrive at the expression that says delta rho over delta t. I move this to the other side so it becomes plus delta rho u delta over delta x is equal zero. And this is mass continuity equation in one dimension. Clearly, I can apply the same reasoning in the z direction or along the depth of this cube in the y direction, and that will give me extension of mass continuity equation to three dimensions, namely delta rho over delta t plus first direction delta rho u delta x plus second direction, let's say y, is delta rho v over delta y plus third direction z, delta delta z of rho w, and that is equal to zero. And this is continuity equation in differential form in three dimensions. This is the, so this is 3D, where V and W are velocity components in the Y and Z directions respectively. This is the form of continuity equation that we often use in atmospheric sciences, more often than the integral form that I previously derived using Reynolds transport theory. However, I believe that that derivation contains more information and more natural definition of flux, control volume, and many other quantities, so I highly suggest you check that video. I hope that some of you can recognize that there is del operator over here and that the continuity equation can be written as delta rho delta t plus. This is nabla dot rho u as a vector. And that is equal to zero. And this is the same as this, but uh, written in more compact way. This would be a fancy form of continuity equation that you can print and take with you to disco clubs if you want to show off with a del operator. Because del operator is, uh, as you hopefully know, delta delta x in the i direction plus delta delta y in the j direction plus delta delta z in the k direction, 
where i, j and k are unit vectors along the three Cartesian coordinates and in this case u is the velocity vector so it would be u i plus v j and plus w k. You can see that this is dot product between two vectors so we get scalar as the result and we can add another scalar so life is good. If you carried out some derivation and let's say you got cross product over here then you should immediately know you made mistake because cross product will give you vector and then you cannot add scalar to vector. After seeing mass continuity equation in uh, integral forms for the last few videos, those of you that are studying atmospheric sciences are now happy because you finally get to see mass continuity equation in the form that you are used to. And now you even know how to derive it in that form directly using the mass flow rate concept. Until next video, goodbye.